Hello, welcome to the latest video. So you want to go to Glasby next year? Of course you do. It's the place to be. A fantastic festival, the best in the world. I'm gonna give you five ways that you will increase your chances of going by thousands of percent. Watch right to the end, because some of these are not obvious, and some of them are particularly, shall we say, ethical. So without further ado, let's get started. Obviously, number one is buy a ticket. Now, that couldn't be simpler. Well, it could, actually. Your chances of buying one are something like one in five, I think, something like that. So it's not a great chance, but to give yourself the best possible chance, if this is the route you want to go down, you've got to plan ahead. Register in advance, obviously, and have everything to hand on the day that you're going to buy your tickets, whether they're for the coach or not for the coach. I've heard anecdotally that buying tickets for the coach, you stand more chance, but who knows? If you want to go by coach, that's the obvious way to go. And yes, if you buy a coach ticket, you've got to go by coach because you get your festival ticket on the coach. Have everything that you need to hand. Don't just have your credit card. Have all your details of your credit card written out. If you've got one of those multiple clipboard things, have everything in there ready to go because it's a lot easier to paste things in than it is to go, oh, where's my card? Oh, hang on, it's here somewhere. Oh yes, long number, which is, oh, you know what I mean. Have everything ready to go. People seem to be confused, which is the best way to go. Do it on your phone or buy on the computer or a laptop. I'm told the phone is faster, but I think it really is up to your personal preferences. Right, so I don't think the best way to get there is to buy a ticket. So let's go for number two which is the volunteer. Now, everybody knows you can volunteer to Oxfam as a steward and you pay up front for your ticket and you do three eight-hour shifts and then eventually you get your money back and you can camp in the nice campsite. That's great. And it does engender, I believe, lots of camaraderie with your fellow stewards and volunteers. So if, if that's you, if you're a social person, that's a pretty safe way to go. But of course, there are other ways to get into Glastonbury apart from volunteering and buying a ticket. And number three, is get a job. Are you a sound engineer? Are you a lighting engineer? Are you a stagehand? Do you work behind a bar? Do you work as an electrician? Are you a carpenter? Are you a security man with an SIA badge? Loads of people work at Glastonbury. Go to the Glastonbury Festival website. There's a page about jobs. Look there and see if you can get a job. Of course, the downside is you're gonna to have to work when you're at Glastonbury. Of course, that may be part of your thrill. You may want to be part of the whole thing, in which case this would be ideal. And the best part is you'll get paid. Don't get there are 800 traders there, including 400 caterers. So if you are a chef or have experience in the catering trade or working behind a bar, there's lots of bars there, the Workers' Beer Company. But to find out who the traders are, there are lots of sites. I'll put a link here and in the description of a site that, that actually goes through who the food traders are and things like that and different sorts of traders. So if you know them, if you've bought things from them, and if you're a trustworthy sort of person and if you're reliable and have some experience, then I'm sure you can get a job working with one of the traders. And even if you don't, now I'll tell you what, a lot of the traders, in mind they only get a limited amount of passes that they can't ask for as many as they want but quite often these things are just run by a very small core so if you offer them I don't know 500 pounds for a traders pass some traders might say yes so that's more than it would cost to buy your ticket yes but at least you'll be in and you'll have a Traders Pass. So that's another way of doing it. There are lots of jobs. Think about it. Use your brain. That's a thing. It's not a question of, oh, I can't get tickets, so I can't go. There's lots of ways. Also, do you know bands? Do you know a band that might be playing Glastonbury, even on one of the smaller stages? Even the small bands who don't get paid often, they will have guest passes or they will have crew that they can take, and you could be one of those crew. And brings us on to number four. If all else fails and you've got quite a few quid in the bank and you're a bit, um, oh yes, I think I want to go and be backstage, then buy yourself some hospitality. Yes, for only 4,999, well, that's what it was in 2023, you can get yourself backstage with a press pass, a photographer's pass, and you can be in the VIP area. You don't need to register or anything. Just turn up with your picture and hello. 
I'm, I'm rich and I paid to get in. Watch a video I did recently about the whole how Grassley makes its money thing that you might not realise, and I'll put a link in up there. Right, so that's four ways to get in. The fifth way is not strictly ethical. I don't suppose anybody will want to do this. I wouldn't, obviously. I wouldn't bunk my way into Glastonbury, would I? Of course I wouldn't. But if you are thinking about doing it, I will just give you some advice. And that advice is to think laterally. Who do the organisers and the security people want to keep on the right side of? Well, obviously it's the VIPs and the artists, right? Yes, so if you're going to bunk in, don't just try and climb over the fence. You've got to do it intelligently. Now, I know people who have done what I'm going to talk about. I don't condone it, but this is what they've done, right? There's a VIP parking area, right? I don't know where it is, but if you look on a map of the festival, you'll see a VIP parking area. Now, to get in there, a lot of people who are VIPs don't worry about having to get things in advance. They just turn up and they get everything that they want. So, I believe if you just turn up and you say you're collecting your pass, they will give you some <gasps> bad if if you don't put a parking pass in your window within 24 hours, they will tow away your vehicle. But apparently, they don't. So don't worry about that. Well, they might, and if they do, then don't blame me. But apparently, they haven't to people I know. So then, what you do is, there's a gate from there, from the VIP parking area. They'll let you in to park, but you've got to collect your passes, etc. So you've got to go to the gate, which lets you into the festival, which is a separate gate, which apparently has only got one or two security security people on it. And they're not really your hard-nosed security people, they're more your VIP security people, right? You see the difference? And you explain to them, you've got to pick up your pass from wherever, blah, blah, blah. Now, it pays to do a bit of research first. If you've been to Glastonbury in the past, you know how things work. That is a great help. If you ever worked at a festival, you'll know how the system works. So use that to your advantage. And then you've got to go to the gate and say you've got to pick up your passes from the stage that you've chosen because there are so many people turn up especially if you go on the wednesday or thursday this is when people turn up they don't really have time to check on everybody and believe me from what i've heard you will be allowed in to get your pass basically once you're in you're in and that's the important thing you've got to act as if you're the person the vip who's going to pick up the pass. You can't be nervous, you can't come dressed like somebody who's gonna bunk in over the top of the fence. You've got to look like a VIP. That's all part of the act. I have bunked into various places in my time. I'll be perfectly honest. Like, for example, I got into Led Zeppelin when they reformed and played at the O2, merely by wearing a um, high-vis jacket and carrying a clipboard. I walked straight to the backstage. I said hi to the guy who was doing security. He said hi back and I just walked in and I hung around for like a few hours and then the band came on stage and I watched most of their set. I don't think that's gonna work at Glastonbury, but you never know if all else fails. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, please like this video. I've done more videos, not necessarily about how to get into Glastonbury, but all sorts of things about of my life, 50 years in the music business and beyond. So like, comment, let me know how you got into Glastonbury or how you're going to get into Glastonbury or some ideas or what you think about this video. Subscribe, press the notification bell so you get notified and I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.